G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on Golden Pit to watch two Conqueror 3 players take each other on as they prepare for EGC TV's tournament not too long before it begins. We've got a wonderful matchup for you as well. Let's get into it. Spawning in on the north side of the map in the color yellow, playing as the Byzantines. It's Fei-Chan. And on the south side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Ottomans, we've got Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Golden Pit. It is a pleasure to have your company today. If you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you go ahead, leave a like on the video. It really helps out with the traction of the channel. Let's talk a little bit about this opening. We've got ourselves a double stone opening. That is correct. Both players gathering up some stone early on in this game. And have a look how many villagers we have got out here for Faye. What is she up to? What is she doing? Take a look at this. This is not something that I've ever seen before. Now, keep in mind, the the Byzantine don't have the same bonus that the Japanese have got. You might be thinking, but Jongo, you know, when she drops off a bit of stone, she gets a bit of gold. Nope, nope, that's the Japanese. Don't be confused. So right now, what we've got is an absolute crazy lady who is going ham with the stone gathering. Take a look at this. Single villager on gold. Four villagers on stone. And slowly trickling in villagers now onto food. I don't know where this has come from. I don't know how she's possibly thought this up is this pot is is the is there is this good let's talk about it okay so the system now has been buffed up you can see that it provides 10 14 18 22 26 percent depending on network level now it looks like she's gone for just a level three bonus early on the only thing to note is that we are a minute and 50 seconds into this game already and she's only just looking to start grabbing those resources for the age up she's almost there with regard to the gold but food has still got quite a while three systems early on in this game this is kind of crazy i think this is going to go on the thumbnail this is going on the cover i don't think we've ever seen this triple system dark age how good is it well let's find out i want to see the age up time that that for me is going to be the big factor how soon is she going to be able to actually click that age up button because normally it's about this time right now that you would expect the byzantines to be aging up and remember they already have a very competitive age up time after the buffs because you don't need to go into that second system. Right, we'll check in on innovation and see how he is doing. As it looks like we've got in the back of the base, the military school has come down. First Spearman making its way out. Remember that when it comes to defenses, Faye has got the ability to use Acrotoy defenses. That special ability. Increasing the damage and the armor of your villagers nearby. Just for a little bit of time while you defend against those imminent threats. Let's check in and see how innovation is doing. Is it's going to be the Twin Minaret Madressa in the back of the base? Perfectly positioned here. Can I just compliment him on that? Uh, that is absolutely wonderful. I'm actually loving the way that this base is starting to build out. It's looking really good. Uh, as long as this position here is saved for the MIA, should be able to fit in. Oh, I don't know if he's going to be able to fit another MIA or another uh, military school over here. All right, Spearman's in. A little bit of siege happening. Town center actually going to be able to provide some decent coverage. Have a look at this. The consequence of playing the Ottomans on a map like this. And we've got Grand Winery now starting to come down. Faye is completely covered by the town center. We can actually see right now out the... Uh, see the line that extends out through the map. And this is just, I guess, one of those situations where maybe it's best to go for no military school in the Dark Age. I remember playing this map and just raging at my opponent because the gold mine, literally, if I remember correctly, the gold mine had spawned two tiles away. So they just put a mining camp in between the town center and the gold mine and the stone was touching their town center on the other side. I'm like, how am I meant to do that? Like I was playing, I think I was playing the English or something or like going for a dark age attack. And I was just like, what am I meant to do? How am I meant to deal with this? Like your stone mine is literally on your town center. It was ludicrous. I'm pretty sure I sent that picture over to the developers. Just like, uh, please explain. Anyway, age up's coming through from Faye. She's got six workers on the winery. So looking to compensate for the, the, the delay in the age up by just putting more villagers on it. So I definitely respect that here. I'm curious to see what her plan is, whether she's going to be moving into a second town center or whether it looks like we're probably just going to be seeing a wheelbarrow come through. Where did she go after that though? Normally, you'd expect to see a double broad axe coming behind it, which is why I find it weird that she's off gold. Not going to be the case, though. Age ups now come through. Plenty of villagers moving over onto those berries. We'll check in on that south side of the map and see how innovation is doing. As looks like it will be a second town center coming out from him. Meanwhile, towards that top side, the scout is going to spot out the base of Faye, and we'll see those three systems already set up before the Dark Age is even over. So impressive stuff coming out from Faye. And have a look at that. It is going to be the wheelbarrow 
that is avoided. Instead, going into the double broad axe, maybe looking to utilize... Hmm, what could she be doing with that 50 gold? Maybe going into border settlements could be a play. Uh, if you're going for the Hippodrome, you'd obviously have access to unique cavalry technologies as well. But it's going to be for Hardened Lamentanite. Look at that. I was going to say Spearman, but of course, the uh, the Byzantines don't get access to Spearman. They get access to a much better unit, the Lamentanite. Arguably one of the best units in the game right now. An incredibly strong unit. Let's take a look and see how Innovation is doing and what his plan is for this game. Now, if I'm, if I'm in Innovation's position... How am I thinking about playing this? I think he's made the right call and going for that second... T Where's the second TC? Wait, he's not placing a second TC. He just went for a military school. He put the blacksmith here. Ah, this isn't the worst blacksmith. I've seen worse blacksmiths. I'll accept this one. I think this is, pro this is, this is fine. I mean, you probably could have thrown the blacksmith here and then the MIA there. And then that way it leaves this open and you've got all of this area. But kind of looks like this might be blocked off as well. I'll accept it. Um, I would have preferred two TCs here. Uh, two TCs to me makes a lot of sense. In this matchup, the Byzantines, they're not necessarily on a timer, but they do like to play to that timer. So I think having the second TC is really, really nice. Not to mention you've got the mango, um, the mango threat inside that castle age, which will help you out against any javelins or longbows, depending on what the Byzantine player opts to go for. But the first Vizier point will come through. It's going to be Anatolian Hills picking up those sheep, that little bit of extra gather rate bonus on the gold and stone as well. We'll check back in on that north side and see what Faye's up to us. Those stones start to slowly stack up. Archers coming out, which makes me think, is that going to be the e Silk Road? Or is it? No, it's, it's going to be Western. No, Eastern. Eastern, Eastern. Let's have a look and see. No, it's going to be Western. So she's going to be opting for longbows here. I thought she would have gone for Keshex just because she's also going archers early. But I guess there's nothing that stops a person from going archers and longbows. I can definitely accept that. But slowly and steadily, this food bank will build up. Keep in mind, she will be able to access only two rounds of longbowmen on this initial berry patch. Now, part of the reason why she's elected to go for the Ottomans, or rather for the Byzantines on this map, is just because there are plenty of berries. Uh, at least, yeah, there's, what, what is there? Three packs of berries. I remember there being more berries on this map. Am I crazy? I remember seeing, was there four berry packs once upon a time? Maybe they've changed it. Perhaps they have. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to go back and check my older video, but I'm 99% sure there used to be four berry patches per player, not three. Anyway, the, the numbers are going to start to build up here for innovation as well. Five spears. A single Sapahi out. Our post is already down. Not going to be able to put too much pressure on this position. Keep in mind, Faye does have the Lament and I, which means you can always look to drop that shield wall and push in and take out an outpost like this. So that would definitely be one of the considerations she'll be making as she begins to come through. Innovation will spot this out. He's got that outpost with plenty of range and no arrow slits inside means, well, it's going to be a pretty easy outpost to take down here. Keep in mind hardened well, shield wall is now through as well. Which means that the damage, look at look at the little, how little the damage is. It's like three damage every shot, something like that. It, it takes its time. Lament and I now coming out. Sapai around the back, looking to try and find a connection. You've got to be careful. These villagers are about to pop out and look to get a repair in, or at least they should here from innovation. Check in with him as slowly and steadily will siege it down. The villagers, they're just going to be popping out. He's not going to be able to grab the repair in. There they go. He's going to be running for his life. Unit number's still quite low here. But Faye putting on the aggression early on, perhaps going for that second town center, might have been the wrong call uh, from, from my perspective. So a uh, good thing to see Innovation hasn't gone for that. But one of the other things he hasn't gone for is seemingly units. Have a look at this. He's struggling now. Up against Faye, there's a lot of units out this early. The archer lament and I combo notorious for how strong it can be and just wait for those longbows to join the battle he's got five of them she's got five of them on the way down now so watch out that is for sure look at them look at the unit difference right now did the devs go too far is this too many units probably not i don't think it's too many units i think it's absolutely fine looks like this worker is not gonna be handing into the grand winery uh which is fine but doesn't pick up that extra bonus so i'd love to see these olive groves a little bit closer to that grand winery it's a small difference but it's totally worth it. You should 100% be looking to fill out that Grand Winery first when you're playing as the Byzantines. Early aggression is lovely out of the gates, though, here from Faith. And this build order, I'm starting to worry about it. I'm thinking to myself, hold on, this is kind of wild when you think about it. She's gone for that really, really quick gather rate bonus. Gets the Grand Winery up at decent timing. Has plenty of units out early on. And we have a transition to Olive Groves behind it as well. She hasn't even exhausted the first Berry Bush set yet. That's kind of wild when you think about it. That is an incredible amount of investment that she's put out. Not to mention the fact that she's got a huge army. 
This is kind of crazy when you think about it. Now, she's only just gone for the three sisters. Now, have a look at this. The stone is slowly building up. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Indeed. I suspect she's just going to wait to cross 350 stone naturally. And then she'll just throw a TC down, which is such a cool move. Because she could technically afford going into a fourth system right now and making sure that it's got plenty of aqueduct coverage. But now, Faye, aware that her opponent is looking for raids with the Sapahi, I wouldn't be surprised if we see her throw down some walls almost immediately, just as a countermeasure. You want to avoid having to deal with these sorts of raids. Oh, I thought it was a wall. It's not. It's going to be a cistern. So she's got, got this nice little square cistern aqueduct network coming up here. So not going to be opting for that second TC. Also going to be looking for the settlements upgrade. You can see the border settlements now coming through. Quite a big army here that is starting to build for both of these players. Plus one ranged attack. Going to be coming through for innovation. No blacksmith upgrades just yet for Faye. The numbers here looking pretty good for innovation. He's going to try and take this fight. But the spearmen or lamentine numbers here for Faye are still pretty solid. You can see that the, the focus from innovation is not going to be on the Lamentini, but rather just focusing down those longbows, which is definitely a, an interesting call. I would be looking to try and hit those Lamentini. It's going to be tough, though. Remember that they've got that ranged uh, or that ranged damage reduction. So maybe it just does make sense in this situation to just simply go for the archers and then just wait for the end of the fight. And you can see that's exactly what innovation will do. Moving up to point blank range, a little bit of an interesting decision. I, I will say that much. Keep in mind the Lamentini do deal plenty of damage in this situation. I think they get maybe a 25%. Yeah, 25% attack speed reduction. So they're attacking one quarter. Uh, uh, how do I word this? 25% reduction. So they're going from, you know, one attack every second to one attack every 1.33 seconds, I think is what it works out to be. Something around that. So it means over the course of four seconds, you've got one less attack, which can, it's, a, it's a big difference, right? Like three versus four attacks, hypothetically. I don't, I don't actually know what the... Uh, Let's have a look here. We can we can we can check. 1.88 seconds on the attack speed. So that means one attack every 1.88. So with that shield wall going down, it would mean like one attack every 2.3, 2.4 seconds, somewhere around there. Uh, so it is a slight reduction on DPS. MIA now going to be coming up, and this position on the MIA is leaving a lot to be desired. One of the big rules I like to follow with my MIA is always next to the town center. If your opponent pushes you right as you're aging up. You're going to be in a really tough spot, especially if Faye just moves forward a little bit and spots this out because all of a sudden you're going to have to cancel that MIA. You're going to have to think about moving it somewhere else because your villagers are going to be... He's lucky. He's lucky. Faye. Oh, oh she's thinking about it. All right. He's okay. I'll tell you what, that could have been real bad for innovation. We'll check in on that north side. Faye with a huge economy starting to build. And keep in mind, she's on one base with this economy. And that's what I love about this is that it's only the single base. She's investing in her economy by throwing down the systems, by getting these olive groves up. And you might look at the olive grove and say, Drongo, you know, other civilizations can invest in their economy by doing the same thing. And yeah, you're 100% right. But you've got to remember the bonus of the olive grove is that you're getting another resource on top of that food. And that resource will be further invested into units. We can see 121 a minute coming through right now for Faith. So a pretty decent, a pretty sizable amount of olive oil will be coming through. But the age up's now in from innovation. Veterancy upgrades are coming through. Looking for veterancy on the Sapahi. Looking for veterancy on the archers. I, I would have preferred to have seen veterancy on the archers and then plus two ranged armor or ranged attack coming out from innovation. I ideally, probably that ranged attack, get a little bit more damage into those units. Uh, but the numbers are starting to build up here from Faye, and I think she's quite comfortable playing this out in Feudal, at least for the moment. Will depend what her opponent gets up to, though, and what those, how quickly those upgrades start to come through. But look at this boom that we've got coming through from Faye. One base, really just sticking to it. At the moment, when it comes to stone income, no villagers on stone. Next Vizier points come through. Probably at this stage, it's going to be a level three Vizier point. Do we see military campuses through? I see three military schools. Can technically make a fourth one right now if military campus is through. Veteran archers. Sapahi also have got their veterancy upgrade. The timing is perfect. Look at the units from the top side. Metas are here as well. And right as Faye clicks up to the castle age, she gets caught out of position. Lantis getting eaten alive by the Lamentini. Needs to move up. Needs to continue pushing up meta. Hasn't gone for that meta attack or that meta movement speed bonus, which means that your units are going to be struggling to catch up here. Looks like she might throw away a couple of Lamentini just to sacrifice them so that the army may live. Golden Horn Tower going to be coming up behind this. Nice little spot she's got away from the rest of the base on that top side. We'll be spamming out the longbows, of course. 
Golden Horn Tower. One of the strongest landmarks in the game. Even after the nerf, it's still bloody, bloody, pretty bloody strong, I think is what I was trying to, trying to say originally. 1TC versus 1TC still. 50 villagers versus 49. Only one has gone down so far, but it's been a pretty action-packed early game throughout this feudal age. Both players jostling for position. But now Faye is definitely on the defensive and not really looking to rush up this landmark despite the huge economy she's got. Still only puts a small percentage of villagers onto it. Lament and I come forward. Gonna need to focus down these meta, but unfortunately there are three of them, so maybe not the right call. You can see there, there she goes. She's looking for it and will be able to spot it. Ranged armor not gonna be relevant. Slowly but steadily, the units begin to fall. The archer numbers are looking good now for innovation. You can definitely say he's innovating in this matchup as the archer mass continues to build. What does he move into next? I would suspect probably men at arms looking to get them rolling out of the blocks here. Age up comes through from Faye. Keep in mind, she's going to be looking for those mercenary upgrades. Needs to make sure she switches over the relevant uh, system. Needs to make sure that it goes on to Dialecticus. Get that extra little bit of research rate. And you can see, I think that's what she's done. Nope, she has not done that yet. Uh, and then we want to see the other veterancy upgrades coming through, most notably our veterancy for our Lamette and I. Uh, archers, not so important because we're probably going to start making less of them. And it's probably going to be moving into Varangian Guard, Lamette and I, Crossbow, Longbow. I think is probably the right call. Nice little bit of mix. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. Varangian Guard, Crossbow, Lamette and I. Uh, and even though we've got 14 archers, we're not going to be making more archers. So you can either leave them with the army like Faye is doing at the moment, or you can take these archers and try and find some villagers and just run them through the base. You know how we often see people do with, say, Jukunu, uh, when, when you just don't really need them anymore and that they, they lose their efficiency uh, once you reach the castle edge. And the reason why that is is just because you've got that extra armor and you've now got access to armored units as well. So now you've got lancers that not only just have that extra four armor, but they've also got access to the plus two ranged armor six armor and you, you look at the archer it's doing what how much damage are we talking it's doing six damage right like it's she's gonna go up to seven damage here and veterancy i think will take her up to nine damage but still just gonna be barely scratching the surface magadol number one is out expect to see a siege workshop thrown down from Faye shortly should be the or would be the right call if she does it you need to expect that timing is gonna come through hold on is that blacksmith yes okay that blacksmith is within the radius of the system Good to see. I don't know if radius is the right term. Influence. It is within the influence of the system. The Dialecticus is on there. Outpost coming up in the middle. Now, one of the things we haven't spoken yet about is gold control. Gold control, incredibly important on this map. All that gold is going to be towards the center. So if you don't win those relics, you need to secure the gold in the middle of the map. Speaking of relics, a little bit of patrols out on the side. Mango shot. Villager gets taken out. You know it's time. Manganel's looking. Manganel versus Manganel in placement. Don't mind if I do. Only small numbers at this stage of the game. I think we're going to have to head out of the cinematic mode. Maybe find ourselves a little bit later in that in that mode. Let's compare the pair, see where we're at. You're looking at 1,200, 17, 2,300, 2,400, 2,800. Somewhere around that region, 27, 2,800. And for innovation... When it comes to... And th there's the archers. As, as we suspected, the archers just, just come out and get moved away. So innovation, 800 per minute. Call it 1,400, 2,000, 2,160. So at the moment, Faye, despite having the same village account as her opponent, has a significant economic advantage because of things like the Grand Winery stacking up with these olive groves that are giving that olive oil through. It is a really big component of the economy. On top of that, you've also got to consider things like the military schools that are coming in for our Ottoman player. You can see he's up to four military schools now, as well as the MIA, which is now online. But remember, the MIA is somewhat cancelled out by the Golden Horn Tower, which are both producing free units on cooldown, uh, which is very, very nice. But plus two ranged armor is now going to be coming through for Faye. On the side of innovation, we don't see... Oh, no, we do actually see the second level has come through. First gold has now run out for Faye. She's going to need to move to the second gold. 3,600 on it. Ideally, you want to get up into position exactly how she's doing right now before this gold runs out. This is ideally your backup gold. A couple villagers look like they're going to be looking to throw a wall up towards the north. Not going to be able to get there in time. Meanwhile, raids coming in on the south side as well. Villagers get caught with their pants down just before that wall will go up. And you hate to see it. You really do. The wall slowly but steadily is going to go up, but it will be denied in the middle of the map. A couple more units. Archers out towards that east side doing a great job of just distracting the opponent. Still no veterancy for them as we would expect. Ranged armor has fully come through now. 
towards that top side. Sapahi now going to start eating at those villages on stone. Lament and I moving to cover. Only a handful of units coming forward. Manganel in placement. Not going to have time to come through as the double mango combo is now looking to Wombo. Okay, 20 minutes into this game. No sign of Imperial Age just yet. Unit numbers are beginning to build, but have a look at this raid that's coming in from Innovation, looking to try and find his way through, and he's done a great job of just getting around the walls on the top side and then finding his way through on that bottom side. We've got the boar that is here being taken by Faye on the Byzantines. I always forget that the Byzantines can take the boar. You know, the Ottomans can't, the Malians can't, the Byzantines can, the Japanese can, uh, the Ayubids can't. It's, it's hard remembering. It's hard remembering which ones can, which ones can't. But I guess the balance is there. Meta gets taken out. Big army in the middle of the map. Teardrop shields look like they might be through as well. Indeed, they are 1.44 movement speed. Relic gets secured. It's two against three relics. So Faye will be behind on, on a relic by one. Might be might be three though, depending on it, whether she keeps this or not. Has the potential to wall a lol, but look at the amount of mangoes that are following here. That relic, that monk will not go down. And now... Over on this west side of the map, you can see Faye baiting away her opponent. Have a look at this, though. Oh, gosh, she's got a big army, doesn't she? Jeez Louise, 96 military population trying to bait her opponent over towards this west side, and you just know what's going to happen. You just know Faye is ready for an Ottoman sandwich. You guys know Faye is... Oh, it's happening. It is happening. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is not good. This is one of those times where Faye is starting to really get good. Like, I remember when we initially casted Faye games, there wasn't many victories in there, but lately it's been a lot of wins. And it's from plays like this, where Faye is looking to sandwich her opponent cinematic mode. Here we go. The Mangonel's nowhere to go. Three different angles. Faye looks to surround. Mango shots to the back. Not a lot of units found. Slowly but steadily. Units towards the back. They're marching away, but they can't stop the attack. Look at her go. You can't stop her now. <laughs> Holy moly, that's a lot of units that are coming out from Faye. Genissary is going to be joining the field, looking to try and stop the fray. Looks like we've got a couple of them out. But slowly and steadily, the, the army marches down the hill. And Faye is victorious. From that fight, but hold your horses. It ain't over just yet. More, oh my lord, look at the units. Look at the economy, my lord, look at the economy. She's lost 10 workers in this game, but she is just pumping non-stop. And this is what I was scared about. Part of the reason why I was advocating for that second TC early on was because of this timing. Around that 20-minute mark, the Ottomans officially become online. Manganel, who needs Springles to deal with the Manganel? I've just got numbers. I have just got overwhelming numbers. Varangian Guard helping out a huge amount in this situation as well. Sacred sites are getting taken around the map. Looks like we've got monks on separate sacred sites at the moment. How do you even deal with this right now? It's going to be a double mango. Double mango. Needs to see... I, I need to see more men-at-arms. I really need to see more men-at-arms coming out from innovation here. The men-at-arms are going to provide this nice little buffer. I think he's gone into a siege workshop. Oh, okay, double siege workshop. Fair enough. So manganel mass is good, but we need mangoes as well as men-at-arms. We can't just be doing only mangoes. Which is, you know, don't get me wrong, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but ideally, we'd like to see a, a, a few more on the front line. Beautiful economy by Faye. Look at this. This is just exactly what you want in this mid-game. She's been playing on off one TC here, feeling really, really safe throughout this game. Did lose quite a few workers, but of course has got the economy. Definitely with the legs right now. Let's check in on that, that number. 1,700, 2,300, 2,500, 3,000, 3,200 income per minute. Compared to her opponent, 1,100, 2,700, 3,000, 3,200. So even Stevens when it comes to the economy, despite that 18, 16 villager difference. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. And now we start to see players moving towards the middle. It feels almost a little bit too late because the gold veins have actually run out. And this is, you never want to leave this until the last second because if you do, there's always the chance your opponent can deny it. You ideally want to come up and secure it before you run out of gold. So you can see how Faye's got 900 gold now when she's once again looking to secure the middle. We need to see a keep here. That's the big thing. Now, you do have 2,400 stone up this top side. So ideally, you want to try and take that stone, throw a keep down in the middle, contest this position, this central position, and that's what you're going to be utilizing throughout the mid game. But now... Innovation just falling back, playing defensive. It's going to be Siege Crews to come in. Looking to jump inside a couple of these Mangonels. A little bit more attack speed. A little bit a little bit less tear down time. Definitely not too bad. And Faye once again going to be moving. Oh my god, look at her, dude. This is kind of wild watching Faye play, man. 
she's crazy good when it comes to these this kind of flanking style and i think that's probably the best way to say it this is how she wins games she just flanks like an absolute mad woman third mango yet to receive that siege crew and i think at this stage innovation can probably just chill because i mean you gotta be really careful about pushing out you've been flanked you've been sandwiched twice now do you do you really want to be flanked again and I, I think the impressive part is that phase flanking with like look at this five different types of units we've got six different types of units here in the middle and over here we've got five different types of units like it's, it's not one group of varangian guards that are coming in phase just bringing everybody it is everyone going for a flank right now outpost gonna get taken out Faye gonna be out of gold very very soon on that backside, you can see she's got a hundred less than a hundred gold to go meanwhile towards that north look oh my she's got three different four different groups of units she is the queen of flanking have a look at this this is insane gosh this is absolutely absurd look at the size of her army she's got double the army of her opponent she's coming in from all angles watch out ladies and gentlemen she's not coming in off the top rope she is coming in from every single rope right now she's on all fours on the top rope that is absolutely insane right now still looking for that position there they are watch out the byzantines are coming down towards the valley the villagers are on the run nowhere to go you know that phase having so much fun the mangoes in the middle looking to clean up the range units the lament and i make connections and everything is getting eviscerated by the army of fey a huge military advantage you know today is going to be her day this is absolute insanity the amount of production we've got out of her right now incredible performance here still those mangoes holding on strong needs villagers to come out and repair it won't be long before they're going down and all don't you love this isn't this so beautiful i tell you what i'm gonna i'm gonna put that up over the mona lisa it'll just make it so much better still four mangoes alive under the keep Faye looking to try and test her luck i'll be honest just get these villagers out throw, look at this Vill just 15 vils in there go on heal this is what's keeping you alive right now go on innovation two of them gonna go down here Faye, i'll be honest have you considered making a springle it was a great attack Faye, but had you just had a single springled this game would have been over this game would have been over a long time Faye now holding both of the sacred sites from 30 she's, she's down to 42 population basically the same amount of population as her opponent janissary's out as well here she does manage to secure the gold this may be the saving grace for her meanwhile behind it still that one town center pumping has not put down that second tc she could technically afford a second one could technically affo afford a third one almost if she wanted to landmark has come down it's gonna be the foreign engineering company what are we gonna see from this bad boy could be the hui hui pow could be the nest of bees you know it's gonna be the nest of bees it's gotta be the nest of bees ain't no way it's anything Ooh, could be the cannon could could it be the royal cannon okay all right all right we'll have to wait and see okay so eight minutes to go for sacred victory i don't think she's really contesting sacred victory it's more more just like hey i've got the gold and i'm annoying drongo big economy for innovation 102 villages still has thrown down that second town center so he's going to be really looking to keep that economy going uh, this is the worst thing you can do you don't want to push out right now all you want to do is just chill when you, after you've thrown down a second tc just remember this is a general rule okay if you've thrown down a second tc and you don't have immediate confirmation that your opponent is doing the same chill just just at, at the bare minimum wait five minutes okay whatever you're doing just wait five minutes okay if you're thinking oh, okay I'm, I'm gonna go you know i'm gonna go cast late no just wait five minutes just make some units in the meantime if you, you you're gonna go and attack the opponent no just wait five minutes if you've thrown down a tc that's your win condition right you're you're trying to outscale your opponent you're trying to build that big economy and and outgrow them elite minute elite lament and i now coming through what was i trying to say I don't, I don't even know i don't even know elite lament and i on the way though for Faye. very quickly being upgraded five seconds to go foreign engineering company and it is going to be the royal cannons wait where's the hui hui power did it, there's no way they removed it i'm sorry it's that's got to be bugged okay it is bugged all right for some reason when we're looking from innovation's perspective we can't see the hui hui power but when we look from phase perspective we can see it royal cannons now coming out nesta is a little bit cheaper but obviously serving a different purpose nesta bees more crowd control royal cannons more building control wall to the north side under attack expect to see a couple of met and I head up to deal with it 
going to take a while to get through. Stone walls now starting to come up. I do like this. I think this definitely makes a fair bit of sense here. I'd love to see walls on the flanks. And remember, this is this is always what you want to be looking for. You want to look for your walls on the flanks first. Just because it's much easier to control the middle with your units. And then save those flanks a little bit later when your units need to get in position out there. Elite units now coming through. Faye will be attempting to defend here against the Ottomans. A huge amount of units. Four battering rams. Mangonels on the back. Cannons move up. Able to take out the first of the mangoes. Sapahi around the backside. Keep in mind, these are not elite units. These are only veteran units that are coming through from our Ottoman player right now. Up against elite longbows. They've got their nice little hats up against the elite Lamentini. And unfortunately, it looks like the keep won't be coming down today. Mangoes fire off the shot. Imperial Age now through for our Ottoman player. Making a little bit of a mistake. Remember the rules. You don't want to push when you're aging up. You don't want to push when you're thrown down a town center. You just want to chill. You just want to wait. You want to bide your time. So definitely throwing away a lot of units that could have been upgraded there. Unfortunately, innovation failing to innovate when it comes to the late game. Did look for something new, but it just... It, it, it didn't go well for him, unfortunately. No unicorn here. Anyway. The numbers starting to dwindle. One third the military of his opponent. The cannons on the front line teeing off towards it. Faye's not even going to have to worry about going into bombards. She's got the cannons here firing off big hits there on the elite crossbows, which are looking pretty fierce. No incendiary arrows just yet. No elite army tactics. Longbows teeing off towards the veteran. See, the veteran, uh, the veteran Sapahi. Gener Genissaries have got their elite upgrades through. So they are going to be on the table now, but it's only a matter of time until Faye slowly but steadily steamrolls down their opponent and takes him off gold. And this is where it gets very, very hard. You've had lots of bills on gold, but unfortunately, this is it. This is it. There's a, apparently there's five villagers on gold somewhere. Oh my lord, the Great Bombard! We completely forgot the hero of the day. The Great Bombard looks to try and sway the outcome of this game. Unfortunately, getting caught a little bit out of position. The Lament and I with too much speed. Bombards not going to be able to defend themselves. They've got Lament and I right at their front door. First one goes down. There's nothing here to defend them. 15 military, apparently. A defensive keep will go up, but of course, we know the reality. If it's not on the gold, you've got to fold. And I think that's exactly where innovation looks to here. As unfortunately, this game, I can't help but feel, is running its course for innovation. Despite being down 20 villagers, Faye has put on an absolute show for us here today. Beautiful reinforcements streaming across the map. Look at how quickly she spends that income. It is absurd how little income, or how little uh, floated resources she's got right now. Genissary's numbers are building, though. She's got five times the military of her opponent. Six times the military now. Nesta Bees is out as well. Looking to sprinkle in a couple of bees. Don't mind if I do. Time to call Jason Statham. You guys know who it is. Hello? Uh, yeah, hi. I was uh, looking for the beekeeper. You found him. It's the beekeeper, baby. He's back this time in Byzantine form. And now looking to absolutely obliterate the Genissaries. That's going to be it. The beekeeper victorious. Sorry, the Byzantine victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, go check her out. I'll leave a link in the description. I got to say these Byzantines are looking pretty damn strong today. What do you reckon? Anyway, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure.